Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. So my topic is the motives and myths behind rape in India. So I'm going to first start off with um, talking about what rape is. So in simple words, rape is any kind of sexual assault that involves um, either sexual intercourse or any forms of sexual penetration. And the key word here is it's carried out without consent. So it can be any um, act by physical force or abuse of authority or against someone who is unconscious or someone who cannot give, give consent. And there are mainly three types of rape, uh, which is anger rape, power assertive rape, and sadistic rape. And coming to the factors, the WHO states that the principal factors that can lead to um, sexual violence against women can be beliefs in family honor, sexual purity, attitudes of male sexual entitlement, and also the fact that there are weak legal sanctions regarding this. Now, the next part of my topic is rape myths. So rape myths are prejudiced, stereotype beliefs that we have about anything related to sexual assaults or the rapists or the victims themselves. So for example, that usually occurs at late night or it's usually committed by strangers, things like that. But those are what rape myths are. Next slide, please. Okay, so the rationale of my study is um, I took data from the National Crime Records Bureau um, from different years, and we can see that um, cases have been increasing over the years. So from 2015 to 2016, there was a rise from 34,000 to 38,000 cases. And even in the case of minor rape cases, there was an increase. And by finding some um, sort of commonality, if, if we are able to find any sort of commonality in the motives or any factors that can lead to rape, maybe we can take effective measures to control such kind of behaviors. And also we can aware, um, we can make everyone aware about what can be the different issues and then start from the base, like start from what causes that and then try to prevent it. And also um, the rape myths part I took is that because it adds to rape culture, like we're always blaming the victim for everything. And so I really wanted to showcase that it's not the victim who's at fault in any of this. And so that's why I took that part also. Okay, next slide. So the objectives of my study is to find the motives of rape using newspaper archives in India and to study the various factors causing rape in India and to find if there's any similarity in the factors and also to study the various rape myths. So I used um, content analysis. So I used secondary data, which are the newspaper archives, and I used the NCRB annual reports to see the general statistics. Next slide. So the procedure analysis, so I took um, newspaper archives from the Hindu and Times of India. So I took one year, so August 2018 to August 2019, because after that I reached some, some sort of a saturation point that the things started to get feel similar. When I, I took an Excel sheet and I took each of the cases that was reported in this year, and I looked at what all different factors were present in that case, and I plotted it onto an Excel sheet and that's how I did it. And I found all these different themes that are present in that. And I also did a pilot study at first to see how many cases there were. And a total of 265 cases were obtained where all the factors are mentioned. Only 36 of the cases mentioned the motive as such, but the other factors were clearly mentioned in all these cases. So a total of 265 cases. Next slide. So my result is, um, it's all present in form of graphs. So I'm sorry the graph is small. It, it's because there was that 10 slide limit. So I couldn't really make it big, but yeah. Um, so the first um, motive we can see was revenge. So um, that was the primary motive that people showed. So for example, if um, someone rejects your marriage proposal or someone rejects anything you want to say as a revenge, the perpetrator just um, rapes the person. So that's what they usually do it. And sometimes um, in case of second marriage things, so when someone comes to ask for a hand in marriage and they say no, instead of raping the, the person, they rape the child instead. So anything that affects their sense of entitlement or anything they feel like affects their power or their status or their ego, they try to um, get it back by establishing power of the person. And that's why they do this. And the second thing was that the victim was alone. So this was a big motive. And this was also backed up when I looked at um, another study where 
um, in US did it and they asked, they asked a bunch of um, perpetrators why they would, um, why they choose to rape a person. And they said that it's because they were, no one was there, no one else was there. So no one could actually see me, no one could catch me. So it was easier for me to do it because I would stay anonymous, no one would know I did it anyway. So I just did it. And the third factor was alcohol. Um, so the perpetrator was in an intoxicated state and that can cause um, impairment in your judgments and everything. So that can lead to um, rape. Next, next slide. Okay, so now coming to the factors. Um, so I took all the factors from the Excel sheet and I made it into graphs. So the first thing was type of rape. So we can see that minor rape um, was the one that happened the most. So in 157 of the cases, it was minor rape. And the other was normal and gang rape. And next thing was gender of the victim. So in this, we can see that only one male case was reported, which, um, which I kind of knew that was going to happen. But I, I wanted to find at least one case, and I found that. And so this, this was because most of the male rape cases do not get reported. And even in this case, it was a child who was, was a minor, the male was a minor who was getting raped. So there was a, there's a strong stigma in our society that we shouldn't report such cases, especially when it comes to male rape. But this does contradict a rape myth that people had that men don't get raped, men also do get raped. The next thing is marital status of the victim. So you can see that most of them were unmarried. Um, in 220 of the cases, they were unmarried and some were married and the others were, they're usually divorced or, you know, they're living live in relationships, they're things like that. Next slide. Right. So when it comes to whether the perpetrator was some of the victim, so whether there was some sort of relationship between the perpetrator and the victim, we can see that in 141 of the cases, it was a stranger, but in 124 of the cases, they both knew each other. So the perpetrator and the victim had some sort of a relationship with each other. So it's not always necessary that a stranger is someone who can rape. It can be anyone in your family or anyone that you know. So it can be any person. Next is the age of the victim. So um, most of the cases were zero to 10 and 11 to 20 years of age. So they were all minors. Most of them were minors. Majority of the cases were under the age of 13. And when it comes to state, we can see that I just, this was just on the reported cases. That might, this might not be accurate data of how many cases are present in this places. This is just reported data. So Uttar Pradesh had the most cases that were reported in these newspapers. And from the age, we can see that it's not always necessary that young people or young attractive people who wear certain kind of clothes get raped. There's nothing like that because people of all ages get raped regardless of what they're wearing or regardless of how they portray themselves. That does not matter. Next slide. In this, it's mainly about the perpetrators and whether the victim survived or not. So in 229 of the cases, they did survive, but they faced a lot of trauma. And even in the cases, when I read through the articles, the, the, the victims are fighting for their life in all of the cases. It's not, it's, it's, it's very difficult for them. And it's a, it's, it, was a, it was a very difficult experience for them. Now, when it comes to job of the perpetrators, in some of the cases, they mentioned the job. So from that, we can see that most of them are laborers or drivers shopkeepers so there's people from all job places and the age range is that there were even minors who were perpetrators so 10 to 90 there were tw in 20 cases even the perpetrators were minors and the relationship with the victim in the cases where they specifically mentioned the relationship so there were neighbors uncles father son-in-law teachers so everyone was there next next slide yeah this was um, one of my most significant findings and Something that really interested me was this. So the first one is the timing at which it gets. Um, so when when do rapes mostly happen? So in this, we can see that it spread all over the place. So late night was really obvious to me. Like I knew late night would be first, but evening was really surprised to me that, because the evening time I put was five to seven. And that is a time when there's there's people around. So it's it's not a time where it's, you know, there's, no population, or there's no crowd or anything. It's a time where there's people and still so many cases happen during that time. And morning, afternoon, night, early morning. So every time frame, there was some one or the other case that happened. And so you can not say that it usually happens only at night or usually happens after dark because it happens at all times. 
And when it comes to location, um, these are all main locations. So the number, the, the, the top three locations were the perpetrator's house, the victim's house, and isolated areas. So it's not necessary that it should always happen in public or outdoors. It mainly happened at the perpetrator's house and the victim's house. So they were kidnapped to the perpetrator's house. And it, it happened in other houses. It happened in moving cars, bathroom, forest, hotel rooms, so everywhere. Next slide. Yeah, so those were the different themes that I got. I also got two, three other themes, but they weren't that significant. Like I looked at religion, all that, but not many cases reported that. So I couldn't get clear data of that. That's why I didn't include that. So my major findings that the main motive of rape is revenge. And the 12 themes that are studied were the ones that I said before. And the following rape myths of a contributor were only young, attractive women who wear revealing clothes are raped, women are usually raped by strangers. They like to do rape after dark and usually happens public or outdoors, men don't get raped. So, so many of the rape myths I could, I would, I could contradict or with proof, like I had proof backing that it's not necessary that this is why rape happens. It can be other reasons also. Next. That's it. Thank you.